Your Hearing Network presents Women Leading Hearing Health, our spotlight series where industry leaders share inspiration, innovation, and valuable business insights for hearing health professionals. Hi, my name is Gail Hannon, and I'm, I am a hearing health advocate. I am a writer. I am a speaker, uh, all on hearing loss issues. I have severe to profound hearing loss, although I've been saying that for a long time. I would actually have to say it's profound hearing loss. And I am bimodal, which means I wear a hearing aid in one ear and I use a cochlear implant on the other. Uh, hearing loss is my passion because it's my issue as well. And I'm, I've been very lucky, very blessed that I have been able to, to use my voice to, to work in this arena to help other people with hearing loss. The best thing that you can do if you have hearing loss and you want to become a hearing health or hearing loss advocate, whatever you want to call yourself, is to learn all that you can about hearing loss, not just your own, because although many of us, we all share similar challenges, uh, we do have different needs based on the degree of our hearing loss, uh, the type, our personality, uh, what we do for a living, our family situation. So learn what you can about hearing loss. Learn what works, what you need, and that will help other people. Um, and just start. Tell someone what you need. Say, you know, being an advocate, when you go into a restaurant and it's noisy and it's hard for you to hear, when you ask for the music to be turned down because you have hearing loss, you are advocating. And you are advocating not only for yourself, but for others, because that raises awareness and hopefully that's something that will uh, be understood going forward. So let someone know what you need. Tell a stranger. Um, be open with your hearing care professional and say, you know, um, what I found might work better for other clients of yours. Tell your family doctor, tell anyone uh, what you need. And you could do it on a larger scale, write articles for your local newspaper. But I also strongly suggest you don't need to do this on your own. You don't have to be a one man band. Join a hearing loss consumer organization such as the Hearing Loss Association of America, the Canadian Heart of Hearing Association, and there's associations in countries around the world. So the best advice I can give if you, if you want to work uh, to make the world more accessible for people with hearing loss is to start doing it. Tell someone, ask for what you need. That's a really interesting question because it happened somewhat by accident. I'm 68 years old and I was born with hearing loss. So when I was growing up with my hearing loss, the things that, are, that we take for granted today were not available. And in fact, I didn't even get a hearing aid until I was 20. That was a professional decision, which probably was the right one at the time. So but I did get a hearing aid and that's it. I didn't know any other people with hearing loss. I had no mentors. It wasn't discussed um, publicly. Um, and it wasn't until I was 40 and I was expecting a baby, better late than never for me, um, that for the first time, my hearing loss took on a different meaning and a different uh, impact. I went, oh no, I, I'm going to be responsible for another person's life, my baby. Um, I, I was worried that my hearing loss might affect his safety. And I reached out for answers. I couldn't find anyone, but by this time there was an organization that could help. And I reached out for the first time to someone else with hearing loss and it was life-changing. I went to a conference of the Canadian Heart of Hearing Association because I'm Canadian. And a, a woman sat down with me and told me that I could do this, that uh, my baby would be safe. And it was life changing. I went in that conference, one person, and I walked out another person. 
And it was the first day of the rest of my life. I became a mom and I became passionate about hearing loss. But I also discovered that at this point with mid nineties that um, the information wasn't that great. There had to be a different way to talk about hearing loss. And I became very, I'm gonna use the word again, passionate about explaining the impact of hearing loss on a person's life. If you understand that, you will understand them better and understand how to create access for your family member, your friend, whoever it is who had hearing loss. So that was my experience. And, um, you know, I, it, it impacted me greatly. I never looked back. Um, I grew up, I was a teenager with hearing loss. I was a, a mom with hearing loss. So I had, a lo I have a lot of experience and it just affects everything I do. Um, and so I'm going to keep doing it until the final day comes. I guess I would have to say that to the, the new hearing care practitioner or, or an even seasoned one, if this person is new to you, don't make assumptions about how well they do or do not cope with their hearing loss. Uh, I know I've had people say to me, well, you've had hearing loss for all your life, so you're pretty well used to it. No, because the challenges remain constant. So um, you may find that the person is not um, doing as well as you might expect. Uh, they still struggle. And it, it's really interesting because when I got involved in hearing loss advocacy, I met many people I have met. I know people who grew up thinking they were stupid because of their hearing loss. And that's due to many reasons. They, there many, some families, especially back in the day, had trouble accepting their child's hearing loss. So it wasn't discussed. Society's stigma about hearing loss is something that can stay with you all your life. And it's certainly something that it was only when I became a hearing loss advocate that I had the aha moments when I was able to um, get rid of that stigma. So ask questions of your client. What was it like for you as a child? Do you feel it's any better now? Um, learn as much as you can about your client, about your patient with hearing loss. Uh, because you'll probably learn something as well. Um, you are probably the one person that's really going to sit and listen to us. Growing up, I, I wanted to write a book. I just never had any idea that it was going to be about hearing loss. And when I had that aha moment to become an advocate, I went, I'll write a book. But it took 20 years. Um, my first book is called The Way I Hear It, A Life with Hearing Loss. And it, it's part memoir, part survival guide. Uh, and in it is almost everything I know about hearing loss. Um, and it's, it's funny. And I use a lot of humor if, if I do say so myself, it is. So it, it's a book that many people have embraced with comfort, um, knowing that they're not alone and made them look at their own hearing loss in a different way. And I, I have readers from all over the world. So that was my goal. So I'm thrilled with that. Uh, and that was published in 2015. But as soon as I published it, I knew I wanted to write another book. Um, a lot of the books that were coming out, when I first became an advocate, the first books were on hearing loss were very dry, this is what it is. This is the cochlea. This is what a hearing aid does. Um, and then I move away from that to more memoirs. Um, this is what it's really like. This is my story about living with hearing loss or deafness or with cochlear implants. Um, and I felt, oh, wow, wait, I wanted to write a book that was a bit more skills focused on, on how to live better. I mean, it's in my first book too, but I wanted to focus on that. And, but um, I didn't want to do it alone just for a number of reasons. So I reached out to Sherry Ebert, um, who, another writer and advocate on hearing loss. She's just wonderful. Said, uh, hey, email, want to write a book? Sure. Uh, what's it about? 
here and lost, duh. And we published it just um, in May of 2022. Uh, it's called Here and Beyond, Live Skillfully with Hearing Loss. And we really talk about the important things and how to move forward on the hearing loss journey, especially the, um, the our attitude, the mind shift, um, the technology, and also what, what we call the communication game changers, the things that, uh, the interpersonal stuff, to how to improve conversations. And um, in our through line, our message is walk tall with your hearing loss. Uh, when you look at it in a different way, your hearing loss itself won't improve, but you, how you live with it, how you interact with other people will improve. So um, yeah, we're pretty proud of it. And I'm proud of both my books. Hearing loss is really has been coming out of the closet for 20 years now, but it's still not as well understood as it should be. People understand, unless they have someone that they know or a family member, people understand or think they understand what it's like to be deaf. People who use uh, sign language, um, they, they, they get that. But they think that when they hear the term hearing loss, they think that we sign. And we being people with hearing loss, lot, most people with some degree of deafness do not sign. We use uh, the spoken word as our as our convert as our main means of communication. Um, so I what I would think would be wonderful is for this message to get out there is that. Most of us with hearing loss, we do not use sign language, although we do rely on other vi visual information. That's why captioning is so important. That's why you know, there being captioning on this video. Uh, we read lips, <laughs> that's sign language for speech reading. We speech read. And that's why the pandemic with math has been very challenging for us. Um, so I guess to learn more about what our needs actually are, uh, to, to help create a more accessible society, um, provide um, hearing loops uh, that work for the telecoil and our hearing aids, um, you, caption everything, um, movies, television programs, and we've come a long way in that, which is wonderful. Um, but to better understand um, and to make uh, bring down the noise. We live in a very noisy society. And this is a really big ask, but if you ask me, what can, what can we do is bring down the noise. It's difficult for us uh, to hear with so much background noise. It is also damaging um, to, to ears. So uh, you know, we know so many people developing hearing loss. Um, just to better understand what our needs are, learn and be open and understand that it's not our brain. Well, actually we do hear with our brain, but it, we have hearing loss. We don't have that. That's what our issue is. Um, and yeah, I just, as I say, another couple hours, I could really give you a long list of things, but uh, I want to thank you for asking that question because and it's, it's an important one. And uh, because when you look at us, you can't tell that we have hearing loss unless you see my cochlear implant it's under here somewhere, there it is, or my hearing aid. It, it's called the in, invisible disability for a reason. It's not usually not readily apparent what our, our needs are. And it's up to us to express our needs. Uh, and it's up to you, the world at large, to understand and to, to work with this so that we can communicate. It's another sign that means communication back and forth. So thank you for that question. And I hope anybody's watching will learn. And that's what we all need to do, learn about each other and what our communication needs are. I just wanna thank uh, your hearing network for this opportunity to talk about hearing loss, talk about advocacy, talk about things that are important to us and the campaign, Women Leading Hearing Health is wonderful. Um, and I just want to again say thank you and I wish you great success.